Thank you. Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome to our Sunday morning service here at St. Nicholas, whether you're in the body of the church or whether you're listening online or whether you're going to be listening and uh, viewing later on uh, through the DVD. We wish anyone who's visiting with us this morning a, a very good welcome here and as a visitor's book, I believe, at the front door of the church and you're uh, very welcome to put your name in there. There are a few intimations. We seem to be getting back to a bit of normality. So there's a few intimations this morning. And it's the next statutory meeting of the Kirk session will be on Thursday, the 17th of Feb February at 7.30 in the Old Church Hall. Now that the worst of the pandemic is receding, we are keen to encourage young families to return to worship. Sunday school is open to all children from age four upwards. There is now a creche room with toys available for the very young, where mums and dads may be with their children while hearing the service being relayed by loudspeaker. And all regulations with regard to sanitization will be observed. The flower ministry. There has been a request for more people to help with the delivery of church flowers. And if you can help, uh, or even on an occasional basis, please add your name to the list on the notice board or speak to Anne McGinn or one of her team. The Guild will resume meeting on Thursday the 24th of February. This is later than planned due to Guild HQ restrictions. We very much look forward to being together again with the programme being provided by the two Macs. You're invited to make use of the prayer cards which are available in the vestibule and to return them to the box provided. Regarding the food bank, a big thank you to all who bring food on a regular basis as this is very much appreciated. And we just encourage people to bring any goods at all uh, along each Sunday morning. That being the end of the intimations, let us raise our voices and praise the only one and true living God by singing him from CH3 number 35, O Worship the King.
Let us come before God in prayer. Let us pray. Lord of heaven and earth, there is no one like you. Kings, queens, and nations rise and fall, but you are a constant even before time began. We know of many gods worshipped by the peoples of this earth, but you alone are the true creator of all we know, see, hear, smell, and feel. Our very senses are part of your creation. We are created in your image, wonderfully made. We can, we can witness the, the beauty of creation, hear the slightest whisper, smell the most delicate scent and feel the gentle touch of a loved one. We are truly blessed to know that we are loved unconditionally by a God who cares, a God who provides, a God who provides all we require, shelter, food, clean water to drink, friends and family, all that makes life worthwhile. Heavenly Father, please forgive us when we think that we should more, have more than what we have. Give us the patience to wait for your provision for us. Encourage us through prayer and petition to ask for your guidance and wait for your answer. Are we asking too much? Or are we asking the wrong question? Whatever it may be, forgive us when we do not seek your guidance through prayer and reading your word. Forgive us when we get so wrapped up in our daily lives that we forget the needs of others. The poor, the destitute, those who live on the fringes of our society. Even close family and friends need our prayers our time, and especially our compassion. Forgive us when we do not pray for, sit for the situations of others we cannot personally change. Those whose lives are blighted by war, civil unrest, hunger and drought. Those who can only scrape by each day through no fault of their own whose circumstances are out with their own control. Forgive us, Lord, when we forget to pray for those we know who need you in their lives, those who feel unloved, the outcast, and the seemingly unlovable. Help us to be more like your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Well, I see we've got a few more children here this morning, and it's really good. I love when children come. They're all looking a bit kind of down this morning, a bit downcast. Is that right? Hmm? Oh, there's a smile. I at least get one smile. Now, the service today is to do with authority. Do any of you know what authority means? Do you know what the word authority means? Being in charge, that's a great answer, a great answer. Because someone in authority can tell you what to do. Who do you think has got the most authority over you when you're a wee boy or a wee girl? Who's got the most authority over you, do you think? Who tells you what, what you can and can't do the most? Yep. Your dad? Your, is that what you said? That's the right answer. Your mum or your dad or whoever looks after you has authority. They can tell you when to go to bed. Do you like it when your mum and dad tell you to go to bed? No? No. 
So, some you say yes. Oh, that's good. Oh, that's good to know. I'll ask your mum later if that's true. <laughs> what happens if you're watching the television or you're playing a game or something and your mum or your dad says, it's time to go to bed? What do you sometimes say? Nothing. You just, you just put the book down or switch the television and go to your bed. Well, I don't believe that, I'm afraid to say. You probably say, oh, can I not just have another five minutes? And sometimes your mum and dad will say, yes, but after that, you have to go. And you go. Well, what other people might have authority over you? Where were you two boys last night? Where did you go? Who did you stay with? Was that last night? Your grand... Gran and granddad, that's right. So, oh, that was Friday. Oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry. Sorry. So who had authority over you then? Was it your gran and granddad that had authority? They could tell you when to go to bed and when you got up. Now, are any of you members of, say, a basketball team or a football team or netball or do anything like that? Do you go to any clubs or anything? Well, tell me. Don't keep it to yourself. Football. Football. And is there somebody in charge there? Yeah. Yep. So they've got authority when you go to football. And usually your mum or dad has to have to sign something to say that they are willing for these people to have authority over you. But their authority is only limited. You want to ask a question? Uh, rugby. rugby. Do you go to rugby? Goodness me. They use you as a ball. <laughs> yeah. No, rugby's great, isn't it? A lot of rugby on the television just now. Do you watch it? Mm-hmm, good, good. Well, people only, like that only have a limited amount. They're only in charge of you when you're there. They can't come to your house and say, it's time for you to go to bed or anything like that because that's your mum and your dad's job. And when you watch rugby on the television, who's in charge of the rugby? No, who, when they're actually playing, when they're playing on the field, what? Uh, Ref, referee. referee, referee, I knew you knew that answer, it's a referee, and he can make all the decisions, you know, and in football and rugby, sometimes they don't get it quite right, and you get people on the sidelines who say things to them, Excuse me, referee, I don't think that was quite the decision that you should have made. Or they might say, I could tell you where there's a good optician. You see? Or words to that effect, anyway. But you see, they, they only have authority when the game's been played. If you go to play rugby with your friends or you go to play football or some other game, you can make up the rules, whatever you want to do, whether it's the best to three goals or whatever, three nets, whatever, because nobody has authority over you, it's just you playing with your friends. Now here's a question for you, and I don't think you'll know the answer. Do you think that I've got any authority this morning? No, shaking the head. Well, I've been given a certain amount of, of authority because I am what they call in the Church of Scotland a reader. And uh, what I had to do, and I could tell you lots of things what I had to do, but I had to go through a course for three years and at the end of the course, I got a certificate that proves that I completed the course and that was fine and you think I was a reader then you think that made me a reader well the answer is no because there had to be a service called 
setting apart. And that made me a reader after that service. And I had to send, uh, sign certain documents to agree to become a reader. And certain people had to sign uh, documents as well to say that I was fit to be a reader. And every year this book here gets published, and most of you probably haven't seen it. It's called The Presbytery of Air Yearbook. And in that book, it lists every church in the presbytery, all the ministers, all the session clerks, who's in charge. But there's also a section that says readers. You see? And my name's on there. It says Mr. James Morrison. So anybody knows that if they want me to take a service, that if they go to that book and my name's in there, that I have been given authority by the presbytery to take services. They might think that's good and they might not. So, But that's, that's the way things go. But you know, Jesus had friends that helped him. Who do you think they are? What were they called? No, no, the twelve, there was twelve of them. No, disciples. There were twelve disciples that helped Jesus with his ministry. And they looked after him. And after a very, very busy day, Jesus was very, very tired. And Jesus had been speaking to thousands and thousands of people. And People wanted to bring their young children to him. But the disciples thought, Jesus is very tired. We're not going to allow these people. They had authority to stop people coming towards Jesus. But Jesus had authority over the disciples. And you know what he said? You know what he said? And I think this is great. He says, let the little children come unto me. And he blessed them. Isn't that great? Even after a very busy, busy day, that's what he said. And I'm sure your mums and dads and the people that look after you are the very same. They'll come in from a hard day's work or whatever. And you'll say, can you give me a cuddle? Will you read me a story? Will you do this or will you do that for me? And they do it because they love you. And never forget that Jesus loves you. Let's have a wee prayer together. Heavenly Father, we thank you that with authority comes uh, a lot of responsibility. We pray for the parents of the young children here this morning, Lord, but we pray for your governance over them and their lives, Lord. Just bless them this morning. In Jesus' precious name, amen. We now sing our next hymn, which is from the White Mission Praise Book, 133, Father, I Place Into Your Hands.
glory and praise. Thank you very much. After the Old and the New Testament readings, there will be a short piece of music for personal reflection. And uh, it just gives you a, a time, if there's anything on your mind or any person or situation, just gives you a few minutes to maybe pray about it or contemplate about it. So the, the Old Testament reading uh, this morning is Psalm 82 and the whole psalm. God presides in the great assembly. He renders judgment among the gods. How long will you defend the unjust and show partiality to the wicked? Defend the weak and the fatherless. Uphold the cause of the poor and the oppressed. Rescue the weak and the needy. Deliver them from the hand of the wicked. The gods know nothing. They understand nothing. They walk about in darkness. All the foundations of the earth are shaken. I said, you are gods. You are all sons of the Most High. But you will die like mere mortals. You will fall like every other ruler. Rise up, O God. Judge the earth. For all the nations are your inheritance. The New Testament reading is from Mark and it's chapter 1 and reading verses 21 to 28. They went to Capernaum 
And when the Sabbath came, Jesus went into the synagogue and began to teach. The people were amazed at his teaching, because he taught them as one who had authority, not as the teachers of the law. Just then, a man in their synagogue who was possessed by an impure spirit cried out, What do you want with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. Be quiet, said Jesus sternly. Come out of him. The impure spirit shook the man violently and came out of him with a shriek. The people were all so amazed that they asked each other, What is this? A new teaching? And with authority. He even gives orders to impure spirits, and they obey him. The news about him spread quickly over the whole region of Galilee. And may God add his blessing to the reading of his holy word. Thank you very much. We once more raise our voices and praise and worship our wonderful God by singing from CH3, number 87, Be Thou My Vision.
Our reading today from uh, Psalm 82 starts with a, a very strange verse indeed. It says, God presides in the great assembly. He renders judgment among the gods. Strange indeed, because who are these gods? In one strain uh, of theological thinking, it is said that uh, God is speaking to the heavenly host, and he's giving them a shake-up, he's giving them into a, a bit of a row, and he's saying to them, how long will you defend the unjust and show impartiality to the wicked? God is exerting his authority even over the heavenly host. We have grown up with authority to some degree or other in our lives. We have people in authority, governments in authority. The government of today has been rocked by a scandal due to parties during the, the, the corona epidemic. The Metropolitan Police Commissioner resigns because of the, the Mayor of London has no confidence in her, she said. But from the very beginning of time, God has exerted his authority over all things. So what does authority mean? Well, the dictionary says, the power to give orders to people or to be in a position of authority. To have authority over others. But God has the only one and true authority over all things. And why? Because the Bible states in Genesis, In the beginning God created the heavens and the earth, and the earth was formless and empty. Darkness was over the, the surface of the deep and the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. There was nothing else. God went on to create day and night. He, he created the sky, the seas, the dry land, vegetation, and all the creatures that inhabit the earth. Fish, birds, wild animals. God blessed them and said, be fruitful and increase in number and, and fill the waters and the land and the seas all according to their kinds. Whether in the sea, whether livestock or wild. And what does God say? It says, and God said it was good. And so that was how it was. Then God said, let us make mankind in our image. Make mankind in our likeness so that they may rule over the fish in the seas and the birds in the sky, over the livestock and all the wild animals and over all creatures that move along the ground. So God created mankind in his own image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female he created them. But here comes the wonderful part. God blessed them and said to them, Be fruitful and increase in number. Fill the earth and subdue it. Rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky and over every living creature that moves in the ground. He also gave his authority over every seed-bearing plant, every fruit, every tree. Everything we use, God gave us authority over it. God gave mankind authority over his creation. God had the authority to accomplish all this in six days. No plans to be submitted no planning permission to be granted. No objections from any other interested parties to be considered. Another example of God's authority is in Exodus. And we can read how God gave Moses instructions regarding the tent of meeting. He gave precise measurements. 
precise measurements down to the very, very millimeter for its construction. Precise details of the materials to be used. And not only what materials were to be used, but the quality of the materials. Right down to the precise numbers of items to be used in worship. In the creation story, we heard the term God said. God said and it happened. And God said and it happened again. Complete authority over everything. God saw that it was good. No need to ask for a second opinion. Moses was not asked to give his opinion on the construction of the tent of meeting. Moses was given authority to make sure that God's wishes were completed. Moses was instructed to tell the Israelites how it was to be built and who was to build, who was to weave the material. We talk about God knows every hair in our head, but God gave every single detail of how our world was to be created. And at the tent of meeting, it was right down to the very fibers that were to be used in the curtain for the tent of meeting. Curtain hooks, how they were to be embroidered, how they were to be formed. It was not a case of Moses, this is what I would like. Do the best you can. It was a case of this is how it is to be. At times for us recognizing authority and who has authority and how that authority extends can be difficult for us to assess. We all have grown up with differing amounts of authority in our lives. Firstly, parents who look after us from when we are born and until we reach a certain age where we can make decisions of our own. Our parents bring us up. They bring us up and we give them that authority. They have that authority to bring us up in a safe environment, to give us a well-rounded upbringing, to make us the people that we are today. Next, maybe a preschool teacher, but they don't have the same authority as a parent. School teachers, they don't have the same authority but they have authority over our children and we expect them to keep them safe and teach them so that they can have the knowledge that they need to become a member of society, a productive member of society. People use different kinds of authority over us to keep us safe and to instill some kind of order of how things will be done. There are, there are so many instances where different types of authorities apply. We could be here all day just listing them. Our jobs, travels, the signs we see, they say do this and don't do that. The Highway Code has just been updated and it states in many sections, you should do this or you should not do that. And usually these parts and sections of the highway code are not backed up by the authority of law. Or it may say you must do this or you must not do that. And these sections are usually backed up by the authority of law. Sometimes we need to be shown the sections of our lives that are going amiss. Just like the highway code, when it says we must do this or must do that, it tells you what law applies to that particular section. So how are we supposed to live our lives the way God intended? How, uh, uh, how can we be pr productive and fruitful and pleasing to God? Because there are so many pitfalls, so many temptations along the way, 
So many learning curves we take, we take in along our chosen path. God gave us the answer through his son, Jesus Christ. But he also gave us a code of behavior, not a highway code, but a code for the way we should live our lives. It's the Ten Commandments. And it says that God spoke these words. Not anybody else or somebody that just dreamed them up. It was God who spoke these words. I am the Lord your God who brought you out of Egypt, out of the land of slavery. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make yourself an image in any form of anything in heaven above or on earth below. You shall not bow down to them and worship them. You shall not misuse the name of the Lord your God. For the Lord your God will, hold any, will not hold anyone guiltless who misuses his name. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Honor your father and mother. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not give false witness against your neighbor. You shall not covet your neighbor's house. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife. Jesus was given authority here on earth. Jesus was God in human form. From his very birth, it was obvious that he was no ordinary child. And as he grew into a man, he was baptized. And at the, the baptism of Jesus, this happened. When all the people were being baptized, Jesus was baptized too. And as he was praying, heaven was opened. And the Holy Spirit descended on him in bodily form like a dove. And a voice came from heaven. You are my son whom I love. With you I am well pleased. And it became clear to every single person that Jesus was a person of God-given authority. In the readings this morning, we are told that people were amazed. What is this, a new teaching? Jesus gave people a new insight into the Old Testament. Into the Old Testament. In the passage from Mark, we read that Jesus spoke as one with authority. But somehow his teaching was different from that of the scribes who taught by rote. Jesus' teaching was from the heart. He taught as one who had authority, not as the teachers of the law. We may very well remember a teacher from our school days who could bring a subject alive, whether it be English, history, geography, maths, music, or any other subject, these subjects could have been so boring, so totally boring, but yet this particular teacher was able to bring it alive. Some people are blessed by natural authority, an authority that draws people to them. Jesus had more than that. He not only drew, drew people to himself, but people he called were willing to give up their livelihood and follow him. Impure spirits knew it too. What do you want with us, they said. They knew that Jesus had the power to destroy them. The Spirit says, I know who you are. You are the Holy One of God. Jesus spent a lot of time with his disciples, but even they were amazed at times. Jesus sleeping in the boat when the storm arose, and they cried out to Jesus, Lord, save us. And what does Jesus say to them? O ye of little faith, why are you so afraid? Then he got up and rebuked the winds and the waves, and they were completely calm. It says the men were amazed and asked, What kind of man is this? Even the winds and the waves obey him. 
It says that Jesus went around teaching from village to village. Calling the twelve to him, he began to send them out two by two and gave authority to them over impure spirits. These were his instructions. Take nothing for your journey except a staff. No bread, no bag, no money in your belts. Wear sandals, but not an extra shirt. Whenever you enter a house, stay there until you leave the town. And if the place does not welcome you or listen to you, leave that place and shake the dust off your feet as a testimony against them. They went out and preached that the people should repent. They drove out many demons and anointed many sick people with oil and healed them. They went out with the authority of Jesus Christ. We may not be asked to do all the things the disciples were given authority to do, but we also have a God-given authority as a follower and disciple of Jesus Christ to do all these things. So surely it is, it is in our best interest to make Jesus our friend and to follow his example throughout our lives. And maybe too, we can be amazed at what we can achieve. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your authority. And with that authority comes an amazing responsibility. And you have passed some of that responsibility on to the people who believe in you. Lord, we ask for your blessing upon us this morning. In Jesus' precious name, amen. We now sing from uh, the White Mission Praise Book, Great is Thy Faithfulness.
Let us once more come before God in prayer. Lord, we give you thanks that you have authority over all things. A God of justice, a God of peace, a merciful God who guides and prompts, whose loving hand is placed upon us in times of need to comfort, to reassure, to bring peace to a troubled mind. You gave us your Son, Jesus Christ. You gave him for us to be nailed to a ragged wooden cross, to take the punishment of our sins upon himself. Lord, we should feel truly humbled. We may never be able to fully repay this most wonderful gift, Help us through your Son to become more like him. Jesus Christ, the light of the world, whose light shines to, into every dark corner of our lives. His brightness that lights the way ahead. A promise of a new day. The promise of a new life in him. We pray for those who are lost and confused. Those who have no true foundation in their lives those who feel as if their lives are built on sinking sand. Let them hear of Jesus and his wonderful ministry here on earth. Jesus, the solid rock whose ministry here on earth gives us all a true example of how we should live our lives. We pray for those whose lives have gone astray through poor choices, those in prison, those browned by addiction to alcohol, drugs, and gambling. Those imprisoned by doubt, imprisoned by fear, imprisoned by anxiety. Let the love and counsel of Jesus break their chains, and the chains that bind and set the prisoner free. Let those who are persecuted because they love and worship you know that you are a God in heaven and that God of heaven and earth loves them and that you are with them in their times of trial. Lord, we pray for our Queen and we thank you for her 70 plus years of true commitment to you and to our country and lands overseas. Your guiding hand has truly been upon her. We pray for the various governing bodies in the UK and we ask that all those who are elected would make their decisions with the integrity and honesty that in their dealings with one another and in their decision making that they would look to you for the way ahead. We ask that you would keep safe our armed forces and that may peace be the answer to threats and postures such as the one between Russia and the West over Ukraine. We pray for our emergency service, police, ambulance, national health service, social workers, teachers, and all those who work to protect and enhance the lives of others. We pray for the sick. We ask for your healing hand upon them. Take away any doubts or fears of those waiting for tests or the results of tests. We ask that you would heal the brokenhearted. Free those who feel they can never be forgiven. Let them know that they are forgiven through Jesus Christ. Lord, we thank you for your great abundance. The great abundance of the wealth that you give us. We thank you that you allow us to give some of that back to you. We pray that our gifts, our money, our talents, our ties would be used for the building up of your church and that they would bring glory and honor to your precious name. We pray for ourselves. Guide us to pray. Guide us to read your word. Guide us to think of others before ourselves. Enable us to feel worthy and confident in our Christian walk and to know that Jesus gave us as believers the right to take on that authority, to hold others in prayers, to heal, to cast out demons. Help us to walk as he walked. 
Help us to walk with others through their most difficult times. Bless us, guide us, keep us from all harm. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We sing our closing hymn for today from the Red Hymn Book, 296. Rejoice, the Lord is King. As we go from this place in the, in the authority of God, as we go to do his good works in his name, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, we ask for your blessing.